everyone, Cash here, back with another video from Madden 16. Today we continue our Raiders franchise, and today we have reached the midpoint of the season. So first up in week nine, during our bye week, it's time to take a look around the league. First though, let's do a little scouting draft stories. We've got a couple guys here. we got Travion Griffin, who apparently had a very good game. Also, DB Brian Austin. So these are actually going to be a pair of free safeties which we will go and scout now. So first up, Austin, he's a base 3-4 player, which doesn't fit in our defense exactly, but, and actually his zone coverage is not too great. So his numbers, he is the best rated free safety. And this is actually going to be, Griffin is the second rated free safety, but both guys not really feeling their top three stats. So I don't think we're going to put them on the watch list. We'll keep an eye on them in the draft, but otherwise we're going to continue. Now looking at the standings, and it's going to be the Steelers leading the AFC North ahead of the Ravens, Bengals, and Browns. Colts and Jaguars are tied atop the AFC South, followed by the Ta Texans and Titans. AFC East is going to be the Bills on top, followed by the Jets, Dolphins, and the Patriots in last place. How weird is that? Raiders are leading the AFC West, 8 on the season, followed by the Chiefs, Broncos, and Chargers. And then in the NFC, Vikings atop the NFC North, the Packers. Well, how weird. The Packers are 1-6. The Patriots are in last place. What's going on this season? Panthers leading the NFC South ahead of the Buccaneers, Falcons, and Saints at 2-5. and five. The NFC East is going to be the Eagles having a good season at 6-1, and one, followed by the Redskins, Cowboys, Giants. The Eagles a big lead in that division. And then the NFC West is going to be the Cardinals, followed by the Seahawks, and then the Rams and 49ers tied for last at 3-5. and five. So that is a look around the league standings-wise. Let's take a look at the stats now. And I did not realize how good of a season Robert Griffin III is having as he played has played in eight games, Derek Carr in six. Carr got hurt, so Griffin came in and played. I didn't realize how well he was playing. 681 yards, seven touchdowns. He did not throw any interceptions as Griffin has played well every time he's gotten an opportunity. Carr still having a good season. 16 touchdowns, just four interceptions. Latavius Murray also having a good season. 1,000 yards for him at the midpoint of the season. He is maybe, well, is on track to get 2,000 yards this year. We'll see if he ends up that way. Darren Ellis is leading the team with six touchdowns, though. Only 200 yards rushing. He is getting his opportunities, especially now as a third down back receiving Percy Harvin is leading everybody with 505 yards receiving Jermaine Lucas the rookie having a good season 15 catches turning that into five touchdowns Lucas Jackson rookie as well six touchdowns so those two guys two rookies Lucas a undrafted rookie is doing very well this season and then Amari Cooper who isn't doing so well because he got hurt as well he's only played in four games this season still has the highest average yards per game so he's coming back 261 yards receiving for him then moving to defense it's Reggie Nelson leading everybody with 55 tackles it's going to be Bruce Irvin with 11 tackles for loss Khalil Mack right behind him with 10 sacks it's going to be Smith with eight and a half Irvin with seven Mack with six and a half and then the interceptions it's going to be John Mike Rogers Cromarty who is leading the way with two, but still our team not very good with interceptions. Now looking around the league, passing is going to be Matt Ryan with almost 2,500 yards leading the way for yards. No one nearing that 3,000-yard mark. It's going to be Cam Newton and Porter with 21 touchdowns leading the way in this season. Carr has 16, and then it's going to be, and this is maybe why the Packers are only 1-6. and six. Aaron Rodgers, 10 interceptions on the season. Running game, Latavius Murray in first place here on yards by almost 200 yards, so he's having a very good year. Adrian Peterson retired last year, so we have to deal with him anymore. DeMarco Murray is going to lead the way with 10 touchdowns. Chris Ivory with 10 as well. We don't have anyone close on this list. Six actually is going to be Darren Ellis, but he's not going to, we're not going to find him on this top list. Receiving, and actually the interesting thing to know at all about the receiving is two Steelers close to the top. It's Brown with 837, and it's going to be over Tavis Bryant with 729. So Ben Roethlisberger, who only has 1,700 yards passing, pretty much only throwing it to two guys. Now we move on to defense, and the only thing really to know here is that the game is still broken in terms of how it tracks stats because we should be on the sacks list but we are nowhere to be found Alden Smith has eight and a half but he's nowhere there same thing happened last year with Khalil Mack and then five interceptions is going to lead the league and interesting Manti Teo there in second with four but that is going to be it for the look around the league we now move on to week 10 eight on the season a huge opportunity for us today in week 10 playing the five and three Kansas City Chiefs they have a new quarterback Vondre Taylor eight touchdowns just one interception on the season so he's having a very very good year and we get this one going the Chiefs with the ball first in the rain here at home and the pass completed to Conley he takes it down the sideline of the 49 and what a great opportunity we have today as with a win 
we have the opportunity to really blow open this AFC West race already with a couple games, I think a three game lead in this division. We have an opportunity to make it four if we can take the Chiefs out. And we also play them again, I believe, in a couple of weeks. So we really have an opportunity to possibly clinch the division until we even get into the meat of the second half of the season. So continuing on this game, let's see what we can do though. We got to perform here as Jeremy Macklin with the catch. Going to be close to the first down, but he'll be two yards short. So third and two, already a few minutes gone in this first quarter. The handoff going to be to Jamal Charles. He's going to look for an opportunity on the outside, but breaks the first tackle. Can't break the second one. I think he had a hole there right in the middle, but didn't find it, and that is going to be a failure on his part. The Chiefs have to get the field goal. So first possession for the Raiders is going to be Lucas Jackson, and what a dirty juke move from him there. Gets out of bounds at the 47. We now have it here first and 10 from the 41, and Carr taking a sack here as Gaines getting him down all the way back to the 49-yard line. So now second and 19, and another blitz here from the Chiefs defense. It's going to be Houston this time with the sack and have the Chiefs found something out here as this offensive line is improved this year but still not the greatest. It's now third and 25 and they're bringing pressure again and we get sacked for the third consecutive time. Houston again on this play and we have to give the ball back to the Chiefs so if they can keep this pressure up obviously we can adjust go with some quicker throws but a very impressive first defensive possession for the Kansas City Chiefs. Jamal Charles here on that carry going to pick up a first down as they now have it at the 40 yard line as we're already into the second quarter here to stay three nothing game Taylor standing strong in the pocket going to make a throw he's going to find Conley and he's going to get it down to the 42 yard line as Vontre Taylor six of eight to start this game now second and seven shotgun from the 34 it's going to be handoff to Reggie Bush and he takes a hard hit from Bruce Irvin and he is going to go nowhere on the play so third down Chiefs looking to avoid another field goal here as Taylor all alone in the backfield looking to make a throw and he will and he's going to connect and it's Rivera the former tight end for your Raiders he went to the Chiefs last offseason and there he's going to make his pay so second and 13 now this one nice defensive play as the bat down on that pass attempt and it's going to bring up another third down so 13 yards is what Taylor and the Chiefs are looking for from the 21 Taylor standing, going to throw. He's going to find Michael Rivera again, but this time we're going to bring him down short of the first down, and the Chiefs will have to kick another field goal. But look at this, just two minutes to go in the first half. Six-nothing game. We have done virtually nothing on offense, and this is why the continued blitzing from the Kansas City Chiefs bringing the secondary in there for the hit. That's going to be complete. So third and ten now. We're looking for a big play. It's going to be Darren Ellis trying to do it. Spin move. Breaks a tackle. He's got some room down the left side. One man to beat. Tries to go with a little hesitation move. That's not going to work, but it is going to be a big first down as we're all the way down to the 25-yard line. So clock ticking here in this first quarter, or excuse me, on this first half. First and 10, Carr looking for someone to get open. No one is. He'll hold on. Actually, no, we have a receiver here. It's going to be Murray, and he gets the touchdown. Yes, he does. Keeps both feet in bounds. Nice find there from Carr. We stay patient, waiting for that play to develop, and we connect for the touchdown. So just like that, 7-6 game. Under a minute to go. The Chiefs will complete that last pass. They now have it first and 10 from the 43. They are not going to take the foot off the gas. They're looking to retake this lead before halftime. Taylor going to take some pressure here. Flag on the play, though. And this one, a horrible penalty. It's going to be a face mask. And that one is not what we need to see. That is going to be Khalil Mack. A rare, rare, excuse me, rare penalty from Khalil Mack. So now third and 10 as it's a couple plays later. Chiefs facing a lot of third downs here in this first half. Can they pick this one up? And yes, they can. That's going to be DeAnthony Thomas with the catch. And the Chiefs will have it at the 13. It's now 10 seconds to go here in the first half. Third and two. Another third down play as the Chiefs no more timeouts here. So they got to look for the end zone. But instead, they get sacked on the play. And that should do it. But actually, the game, I forget, is so cheesy when it comes to these situations. I accidentally picked a play, forgetting that when you do it, they immediately come out in the field goal formation. And they're able to kick it with one second to go. I don't know why it does that. But they get three free points going into halftime. The lead is 9-7 Chiefs. And we get into the second half now looking to improve on that first half a okay first half we didn't really do a whole lot on offense but coming out here we're looking for blood and we are looking for blood Amare Cooper going up and getting that pass as a beautiful catch from Amare Cooper so already first to 10 here from the 47 car going to throw once again and we are going to find Percy Harvin another impressive catch as he's able to hold on to that one even as he takes the hit injury on the play for the Chiefs secondary now second and three it's gonna be a handoff to Latavius Murray and he is gonna break a tackle but can't get it past the next guy he's down as he has 44 yards rushing on the game now from the 39 first and 10 car dropping back facing pressure we get rid of it this time before the sack it's gonna be lucas jackson with the catch he's down to the 19 as car now 140 yards passing 
Second and 10 now from the 19 as we are going to be looking for the end zone here. Can we find it? Yes, we can. Beautiful route from Alan Hearns, and he does not get into the end zone. Thought he had it, but he went out of bounds at the one. So looking to finish the drive off here. First and goal, Murray out of the backfield. No, actually, excuse me, it's going to be play action. I fooled myself, and Lucas Jackson with the catch in the end zone, his seventh receiving touchdown of the season. An impressive rookie campaign for this tight end, but now the Chiefs coming right back. Michael Rivera with the catch, takes it down to the 31. Taylor with 171 yards passing, 14-9 to game. We're already in the fourth quarter. This game is flying by as Reggie Bush going to come out of the back of the catch this pass down to the 14 as the Chiefs not going away in this one. They are proven to be a very, very tough out here. Second and five down from the 10. Reggie Bush in the backfield spelling Jamal Charles, and Reggie Bush is going to take this one, breaks a tackle. No one's going to be there, and Reggie Bush into the end zone, and the Chiefs have retaken the lead. Is our perfect record in jeopardy here against the Chiefs. This one would be huge, especially for the spot in the division as our potential four-game lead would suddenly shrink to just two as we will get the catch there as it's going to be Lucas making the reception. Also, I did forget to mention the Chiefs tried to go for two. They failed, so it's only a one-point lead for the Kansas City Chiefs. Carr here, first and ten. A lot of time to throw, and we're going to find a receiver. You see him in the middle of the field. We're going to go to circle. It's going to be Hearns, and his own player gets in his way. That should have been a touchdown. I'm not sure who it was running the other way. Get out of the way, though. Hearns is down at the one. Actually, at the two here, so first to go two. Can Murray finish this drive off? Yes, he can. Spin move at the perfect time, and just like that, we retake the lead, so no worries, everyone, as we also go for two and do not get it. So it's now a five-point lead for the Raiders. The Chiefs need a touchdown, and they're not getting on this one. Bruce Irvin, what an interception from the linebacker, flying out of nowhere, diving for the pick. And look at this defense. They are always there to help us out when we need it most as they get the turnover. And now here on this play, another sack for this Kansas City Chiefs secondary. This defense has played very well today as it's now third and 16. Play action to Ellis Carr looking. Going to throw downfield. This one's going to be complete. No, it's going to be intercepted. Bad throw from Carr. Bad, bad decision as how many times has that happened this season where we have a deflection? But the Chiefs, new life here. we got to step up now. Next play, first and 10. It's going to be a pass, and it's going to be intercepted. We take it right back. Janoris Jenkins with the interception. And what an unbelievable couple plays here as we get the pick. We throw it back. We get another one back. Is this one going back and forth in the fourth quarter? Who wants the win? Third and two. It's going to be Latavius Murray getting the first down. The Chiefs call their final timeout. So second and one. This game virtually over. But let's just make sure they know it's over. Latavius Murray into the end zone for the touchdown. And that will do it. This one was close. One of the closer battles we've had all season. But we're going to hold on. We get to win 27-15. to 15. Derek Carr 18-23 for 258 yards. Two touchdowns. Taylor goes 201. No touchdowns for him. Only 57 completion percentage. Two interceptions. So not the greatest game. Carr does throw the one pick. Latavius Murray 20 for 86 and two TDs. Jamal Charles 13 for 60. Reggie Bush does get that one touchdown. Lucas Jackson, seven catches for 53 yards and a TD. Alan Hearns leads everyone with 57 yards. Latavius Murray, 46, and that beautiful, beautiful touchdown catch in the first half. And then on defense, it's going to be Reynolds with 10 tackles. Carey with one tackle for loss, no one over one. Three sacks for Justin Houston, two for Cleo Mack. The interceptions from Jenkins, Reynolds, and Irvin. So a nice game from Reynolds there, but an even better day for this defense and an even better day for Latavius Murray. He's going to be the Week 10 MVP. He gets over 100 yards of total offense, three, or excuse me, two touchdowns, as this one could have gone to a couple guys, but I felt Murray was very key, very, very key in helping us out with a couple scores we needed that ended up being the difference to get this win against the Chiefs. So we moved to 9-0 in the season, and next week it's another divisional game. It's against the 2-7 Chargers back at home yet again as we're into the second half of the season, and maybe with a few more wins, if things go our way, we can maybe clinch the playoffs early. Obviously looking pretty good in our chances for the playoffs this season, but maybe we can try and wrap up that first round by this time as we failed to do so last year. But that is going to be it for this one. If you enjoyed the episode, please go ahead and give it a like. I'd really appreciate it. And subscribe to see any future videos that I make. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.